Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video dipping into our collections and looking at Dundee's history. Today we're going to be looking at fairly recent history as I talk about a project I've been doing over the last decade. You'll recognise the building here, it's Tayside House, and it's fair to say it was not Dundee's most loved building. Built in the 1970s to serve as a headquarters for the new Tayside Regional Council, it passed into the ownership of Dundee City Council in the 1990s, but was always seen as something of a carbuncle. It was not seen as an attractive feature of Dundee's landscape. Now, being a big dominating building, this was a problem. It was also seen as symptomatic of a bigger issue, and that was that Dundee's riverfront was in decline. Now, historically, the city centre and the waterfront had been very clearly connected, but particularly following the building of the Tay Road Bridge in the 1960s, the waterfront area had been cut off and a number of the buildings there, including Tayside House, were felt to be eyesores. And there was, as the new millennium dawned, there were increasingly growing voices that something needed to be done about Dundee's waterfront. And eventually a waterfront regeneration plan was developed and that would see Teesside House go. Now it was in 2012, the start of the year, we knew Teesside House would imminently be going. We also knew there was going to be other big changes to Dundee's waterfront, which would see the removal of buildings like the Hilton Hotel, the former Earl Grey Stacus, and the Olympia Leisure Centre. And so it was on the 19th of January that I took a series of photographs from the top of the University Tower building, showing the view towards the waterfront area, in the knowledge that many of the buildings seen here, including Tayside House, would be disappearing. And thereafter, I took fairly regular photographs to chronicle this change. And here we can see over the next year and a half what happened. Tayside House got smaller and smaller, as it was gradually demolished, scaffolding went up, it was manually demolished at the top, and then more conventional demolition means in the lower half. And by September 2013, it was gone altogether, and the other buildings there would soon follow. However, I knew I just didn't want to take pictures from the tower. We wanted to get more photographs. And so very often during lunchtime, when this was happening, I would go down and take photographs. And this was one of the first occasions I did that in June 2012. This is the demolition of the podium block. Now, the podium block stood between Tayside House, the main bit anyway, and the Caird Hall, and had linking bridges connecting them. And this was the first bit of Tayside House to be demolished. And here we can see it mid-demolition. The link to the Caird Hall had already been severed. The bridge to Tayside House is just a way to come off. Following that, particularly in 2013, as the main demolition work started, I took a lot more photographs down to show the demolition, including the famous muncher, which chipped away at the remains. As I've said, it wasn't just Tayside House that was going to be coming down, though. So I made sure to take photographs of other buildings that would be disappearing. And the Olympia and the Hilton Hotel were obvious examples, including the Olympia's famous flumes, and the Hilton with its extension that was a slightly different colour from the rest of the building. But we weren't just going to stop there because it wasn't just about getting rid of things. There were to be major new buildings at the waterfront and the most important of all was the v &A Dundee. And here you can see the photographs I took from the tower as that was getting built, starting with the cleared site in June 2014 and we can see the v &A growing steadily over the next two and a half years. We can also see the new main building for the railway station starting to appear in the last photograph there, which again is part of the waterfront redevelopment. Again, it was important to go down and actually get photographs closer up to the building work being done. So here we can see some of the cranes down at the V&A site, and here we can see early work on the actual building uh, as it grew up beside Dundee's iconic discovery. 
And here we've got the final V&A, &E, a very striking building, a building that's attracted interest from all over the world and has really helped to put Dundee more firmly on the map. But we're still taking, the changes are still going. And here is a photograph I took very recently. And you'll notice it's exact, taken 10 years to the day since the first one. And it's the view out the tower again. And it is amazing how much it's changed. Teesside House gone, the waterfront looking very different. And no doubt we'll see more changes in the next few years. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk again soon.